Well, hello there, and welcome to St. John's. Uh, today is the third Sunday of the season of Lent, uh, and it's also the day that our parish is celebrating its annual general meeting. I'm sure if celebrating is the right word, but there is certainly an annual general meeting uh, in our schedule for today. So we're going to share a prayer near to the end of our service for the life of our parish in recognition of that fact. I'm so glad that you've joined us for worship today. Everything that you need to be able to participate in our service is going to be shared with you on your screen. And what we're going to do is we are going to take a, a very quick break just in case there are any uh, community announcements that would be good for us to pay attention to. Once that's done, we will be sharing the readings for today up on the screen with you. So if it's helpful, you can feel free to pause the video at that moment. You can grab your favorite Bible. You can bookmark those passages as they come up later in our service. I'll be back in just a minute. <laughs> And here we are, ready to share worship together. Let me begin with these words. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray together as we say, Father of mercies, alone we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. When we are discouraged by our weaknesses, strengthen us, we pray, to follow Christ, our pattern and our hope. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. And now, friends, it's time for our first reading for today. A reading from Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 to 17. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, 
but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord. Today, we are sharing Psalm number 19 together. Uh, shortly, the verses from that psalm will be up on the screen in front of you. I invite you to respond with those verses that you see printed in the bold print. Brothers, sisters, this is Psalm number 19. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Yet their voice goes out through all of the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In the heavens he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them, and nothing is hid from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. But who can detect their errors? Clear me from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. And now, let's turn our attention to our gospel reading for today. John chapter 2, verses 13 to 22. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their temples. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, 
This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The word of the Lord. Hello, good to be with you. And what wonderful readings set for us today. Before we begin in considering what they mean for us today, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you that by your heavenly grace, you're always speaking to us. Help us now to reflect on what you might be saying. Grant to us ears to hear, hearts to receive, and by your Holy Spirit, a will to put into place in our lives that which you would lead us to today. And we ask this, Father, for your glory's sake, and in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I've got a question for us. I wonder, what is it that we have learned most about ourselves during this pandemic? What have you learned most about yourself and what have I learned most about myself? It's an appropriate time to ask that question. Why? Well, firstly, it's Lent. Lent is always a good time to ask those kinds of questions that help us self-reflect. Secondly, today, March the 7th, is the day of our annual meeting. And annual meetings are always good times to ask ourselves the kind of questions that help us self-reflect as a church family. And then I think there's another reason too. Today, March the 7th, marks exactly 365 days since we were last here all together in this building as a church family. Yep, Sunday, March the 8th, 2020, was our last Sunday together before the lockdown. It has been a challenging year. We have had much to grieve, many losses. But there is hope too. Hope grows with vaccines. And I've heard the exciting news this week of people have shared with me, they've had their first vaccination. Maybe the worst is now behind us, but we know we still have a long way to go. So back to my question, what have you learned most about yourself? For me, I have been shocked to discover just how extroverted I am. Shocking. Secondly, I did just, I just did not realize how much I appreciated the Psalms. I realized this when I observed myself saying in both the pre-recorded and the on-site services, this is my favorite Psalm. And I would say it every week about every Psalm. So I guess I like all of them. Psalm 19 is our Psalm set for today. And I want to say again, this is my favorite psalm. And it's a psalm that neatly breaks into three very helpful chunks for us. Verses 1 to 6 is about how our God speaks through the wonder of creation. Verses 7 to 11 lays out for us well, what is brought to us, the benefits, if you like, of the speech that our God utters. And verses 12 to 14 are the response of the psalmist to what God speaks. We'll look briefly at each section. So in verses 1 to 6, the psalmist reminds us how the heavens and the sky above declare and proclaim both God's glory and his handiwork. And these declarations and proclamations are constant. Day after day, it pours out speech, says the psalmist. And I love how it's pictured by the psalmist as like a liquid, pours out speech. Have you ever done what I've done too often in my life? Dropped half a litre, a pint of milk on the floor? It spreads, doesn't it? And covers so much ground, unbelievably so. Likewise, says the psalmist, the declaration of the glory of our God is poured out and it spreads and spreads as it's poured out in that declaration. 
And this proclamation is never ending. Day after day, night after night, speech is poured out. But it's not just words, words that we hear. It's a speech with a purpose. It's a speech that gives knowledge, understanding about the God that is being glorified in the speech that's being uttered. And it's impossible to miss these utterances. This is verses 3 and 4. There is no speech, nor are there words whose voice is not heard. Their voice goes out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. And now to this picture of the ends of the earth and the ends of the world. Now the psalmist adds to this picture of praise the sun for which a tent has been pitched. So just as that voice of declaration goes through all the earth to the ends of the earth, the ends of the world, so does nothing escape from the heat of the sun, from the rays of the sun as it runs its course with joy from one end of the heavens to the other, going from one end to the other, spreading forth its light, its joy, its heat, that message of the glory of God. I love that picture of the sun's rays being like the declaration of praise, not just shining forth from one end to the other, but hitting all the surface of the earth. Nothing is hidden from this declaration of praise. Now verses 1 to 6 are worthy of a sermon in their own right, but time is against us today because of the annual meeting. So let's move on to verses 7 to 11. And the psalmist describes these utterances in particular ways. So they declare God, they declare God's glory, they give us knowledge about this God that they're declaring speech about. But there are six words that the psalmist used to describe these utterances. Law, testimony, precepts, commands, fear, rules, or just decrees is perhaps a better declaration. So these words going out, they're not just glorifying. They're bringing to those who hear the law, the testimony, the precepts, commands, the fear of the Lord, and the just decrees of our God. Again, all six of those could be a sermon in their own right. All are so different. All of them enrich us who receive them. No wonder that these are described as the finest gold. There is nothing more precious in our lives on this earth than these declarations. Wonderful. And sometimes we can get so busy in our lives and so busy learning and discussing that we actually forget the sheer treasure that they are. Whatever is precious in your life and mine, nothing compares with these words, this law, testimony, precepts, commands, fear, just decrees. They reveal to us the very heart and nature of our God. One of the things we tend to do when we hear these words is we can think about them just in terms of them being about what's in our Bible. Well, of course, it includes what's in our Bible, but it also is about the lives uh, who hear these words and then live them. It's about people who live lives in the light of these words. It's about people who don't just hear, but live out the words that are spoken, live out their lives in the light of the law, the testimonies, the precepts, the commands, the fear of the Lord and his just decrees. Because it's possible just to hear them, isn't it? All of them require a response to live out what these words mean for us. So it's not just to hear, it is to do. To hear and then live out these lives putting into practice all that's wrapped up in the word that we hear. And what does it do to us? What does it do to those who listen, receive, and live it out? 
Well, the psalmist lists them. He lists eight, let's call them benefits, that are brought into the lives of those who hear and live it out. Revives the soul, makes wise the simple, causes rejoicing in our hearts, enlightens our eyes, brings truth, brings righteousness, brings warning, brings reward. No wonder there is nothing more precious in our lives than the word that God speaks to us, his people. Again, each one of those eight could be a sermon in their own right. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe let's have a sermon series on Psalm 19. But anyway, that's for another day. Suffice to say, the word that God speaks to us causes us to be revived in the very depths of our soul. It causes us to be a people who are increasingly rejoicing, enlightened, made wise as the word uttered brings to us truth, righteousness, that warning in our lives and reward. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful truths and benefits God brings to us through his word. And then the psalmist ends by asking himself some self-reflective questions in the light of all of this. Questions that are really good for every disciple of Jesus to reflect upon. So here's verses 12 to 13. Who can discern his errors? Declare me innocent from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgressions. I love how the psalmist seems to be thinking aloud with us here. Who can discern his errors? It's almost like the psalmist is expressing, Father, what can I not see? And what is it that I see that I think is okay? You see, we can't see by ourselves. It's why we need what the Lord speaks to us to understand those six descriptions of the word, you know, the law, the testaments, precepts, etc. In order for us to be able to see and understand what's going on in our lives. And of course, it's worth saying, this is a lifelong process. I rejoice that by the grace of God, his process of making me more and more like Jesus is one that will carry on for you and me throughout our lives. But who can discern his errors? Well, we can't without God. God helps us to see. And what are these presumptuous sins, i.e. these things I think are all right I'm doing that actually are not? Well, again, we need that illumination by the Holy Spirit. It's almost as if the psalmist is saying, until I can see fully, Lord, Please forgive me for what I cannot see. He actually uses that phrase, doesn't he? Keep back. Keep me back. Pull me back almost from those things I do that are not what you would have me do. Pull me back from these things that I think are okay, but you think otherwise. May they not have dominion over me, the psalmist says, for they will until we can see, until I, the psalmist is saying, can see that they're not okay. Then it's by your grace, by your help, that I will be blameless and innocent. But only by your help, only if you keep me back, and also forgiving me for what I do, that I cannot see is right in your eyes. I love this psalm, but then I love them all, don't I? So back to my original question. What have you and I learned most about ourselves during this pandemic? Let's spend time in Lent asking God, using the words of this psalm perhaps, to help us reflect on what our Lord would see. Perhaps those questions that the psalmist asks in verses 12 and 13 could be good ones for us to bring into our Lenten practice for this year. However, the Lord leads us in our self-reflection as we enter this second 
and hopefully final year of this pandemic, we pray that our God would be helping us hear, see, and live out more and more of his word, experiencing more and more these wonderful benefits that by his grace, his word brings into our lives. So may God speak to you and to each one of us that we grow in all the psalmist speaks of and so can join in all creation in declaring and proclaiming the glory of our God and his works. And may our prayer be the same as the psalmist prayers in verse 14. And I'll end with this and I invite you to join in with me as we make this our prayer. Let's say together, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. And now, friends, let's share some ancient words long treasured by the church, words of faith and of hope and of solidarity. Let's share the words of the Nicene Creed as we say together, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father through whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Well, friends, we come to that place where we share prayers together. And so as we move through our litany today, please feel free to pause the video if you are feeling there is a prayer that you would like to pray at any given moment of time. And then, of course, you can rejoin the litany as it goes. My sisters and my brothers, let us pray. Lord, our psalm says the heavens declare your glory, and it pictures the sun as a strong man rejoicing to run a race. In our northern city, the sun is in spring training, rising earlier, setting later, running a longer race each day as it prepares for the spring equinox and the marathon of summer. The sun's face has relaxed from the icy stare of deep winter to a warmer smile of spring. Its light sparkles and plays on the snow as it turns walking trails into slush and ponds. Our psalm says the law of the Lord is perfect. May it be like the sun on our icy hearts, melting the hardness of winter, softening the pain of pandemic, warming the chill of loneliness, bringing your promise of spring and renewal and hope. May the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the worldwide church, we pray for the province of the Anglican Church in the Congo, Zachary Katanda, Archbishop. The Democratic Republic of the Congo, where the Italian ambassador was recently killed, is one of the top ten most dangerous countries in the world. Protect and sustain your church there. May the heavens and earth be filled with your glory. In Bouye, Burundi, we pray for the archdeacons of the diocese. May they know that your law is perfect, reviving the soul. In the Canadian Church, we pray for the Diocese of Ontario, Michael Oulton, Bishop. Give them a clear vision, enlightening their eyes with your word. In our diocese, we pray for the parish of St. John Sedgwick, Rick Lorendu, priest in charge. As he leads two small Lutheran congregations in Lougheed and Forestburg, plus the Anglican Church in Sedgwick, we pray that you will give him wisdom and strength. We pray for the Ermanskan Cree Nation, acknowledging that our church stands on Treaty 6 land. Thank you that they have started receiving the COVID vaccinations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our parish, we pray that you will combine our Lenten observances with the pandemic restrictions to create emptiness in our lives and that your spirit will fill our emptiness with your peace and beauty. For our parish mission, 
We thank you for the members of the Outreach Committee and the people who donate faithfully each month. May the goods and the love St. John provides encourage the recipients and make them aware of your faithfulness. In our city, we pray for education workers, teachers, professors, teachers' aides, occupational therapists, administrators, school staff, and others. May they know your presence and support as they cope with changing and demanding workloads. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring to you those who need healing. Your law is perfect, reviving the soul. May it do that work in Bob, Therese, Christina, Kim, Camille and family, Henry James, Connie and the residents of Canterbury Court, Vizier, Lindsay, Sue and Diane, Sydney, Dawn, Donna and Clarence, Warren, Audrey and Claire, Audie, Sylvia, Angie, Brenda, Elizabeth, Michael, Patty and family, Ainsley, Carly, Lois, Hilary, Melaine, Samuel and family, Alma, Allison, Bob, Susan, Cheryl, Moritz, Christine, Allison, Simon, Mike, Elsie, Maria, Diane, Gertrude, Charity, Pat, Sheila, Jill, Floy, Hoden, Janet, Eric, Kara, Thomas, Will, Patricia, Rita, Juline, Peter, Aggie, Ian, Michelle, Ida, Trish, and Callista. We thank you for the work clergy, church staff, Vestry and many volunteers have put into the annual general meeting. We pray that you will accept this meeting and all that is reported as our gift and sacrifice to you with thanks that you have brought us through a year of pandemic to a new year of hope. In the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. And now, friends, in this space of prayer that we have entered together, we can find the courage to be honest with each other, honest also with our God, about those places and those times where we know that we have gotten it wrong. And so what I would do is ask that you just take a moment in reflection, in quietness, over the week that's been, to ask yourself the question, is there anything that would be good for me to take this opportunity to make confession for? And then once that's done, we all share together in a prayer of confession. And now, my friends, we pray together and we say, Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
maker of all things and judge of all. We acknowledge and we confess our manifold sins, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty. We do earnestly repent. We are heartily sorry for these, our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. And for your Son, Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past. And grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord God, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all of our sin. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to everlasting life. And these in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, let us wrap up this prayer that we have been sharing as we share together in that prayer that our Savior has taught us to pray. As we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, friends, as we shared earlier, today marks the occasion of our parish's annual general meeting. And so what I'd like to do is to ask if you would join with me in a prayer for the life of our parish. As we pray together, we say, Lord God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably upon your church, that wonderful and sacred mystery. And by the tranquil operation of your providence, carry out the working of our salvation, that things which were cast down may be raised up, and that all things may return into unity through him by whom all things were made, even thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Well, that does it for our time together today, friends. Thank you so much uh, for joining with us and sharing prayer. As we like to do, uh, I will leave you today with a piece of music for your enjoyment and also for your reflection. Let us depart in peace, friends, in the name of the Lord. Amen. <laughs>